we are at the first world congress on cardiometabolic medicine and uh, you are watching us live on the rightdoctors.com. I am Dr. Amrish Agarwal from UAE and with me is a very, very important guest, Dr. Hassan Kamas, head of uh, medicine and uh, head of uh, renal transplant unit and uh, nephrology at Fujir Hospital, UAE. As you all know that the most common cause of death is cardiovascular disease and actually cardiovascular disease, the most common factor is hypertension. And today, we will get a special insight from Dr. Hassan Kamas about his concept about resistant hypertension. Please, Dr. Hassan Kamas, would you tell us what do you think about resistant hypertension and how should we tackle this endemic in this current era? I think this is a very important question. Now, um, to, to summarize how um, we should tackle a resistant hypertension, the first stage, I think, is to make sure that we are really de dealing with um, resistant hypertension. And that I mean, make sure of your diagnosis. So, you have to exclude many factors that makes the disease or hypertension resistant to the medication you're giving to your patient. So, I understand your question that you feel that the most important thing we should tackle is measurement. So would you tell us what are the factors which can lead to inaccurate measurements in a person which is walking to us in the clinic or for that matter of person we are measuring in the hospital environment? Because as you know, nobody likes going to the hospital. Resistant hypertension is uh, problematic for a lot of physicians. Um, when we talk about resistant hypertension, there are a lot of principles we have to apply and a lot of things we have to apply to this diagnosis in order um, to classify it as a true resistant hypertension. Um, number one, you have to make sure that you are dealing with resistant, with resistant hypertension. You're not dealing with something else. And what makes the, uh, the blood pressure uh, resistant is there are patient factor, there are disease factor, um, there are um, iatrogenic factor or some, or some factor related to the drug, I mean to the doctors or to the uh, health institution. And there are um, some factor related to the patient himself. Now, when you come to the um, factor that are related to the institute, number one, you have to make sure that you are measuring what you're supposed to measure. You're measuring the right blood pressure. So, um, office blood pressure um, does not work anymore um, for the diagnosis of resistant hypertension. It has to be either umbilical blood pressure or automated office blood pressure because that will give you accurate blood pressure and that will exclude for you um, the white coat hypertension. Um, of course, taking the um, other precautions uh, of uh, measurement of blood pressure, uh, uh, taking it in mind, like you have to use, for example, the, you have to use the right cuff. The patient should not have smoked in the um, in the last 30 minutes. Um, the patient should be relaxed for at least five minutes. Should not be active listening to to something, or he she, he should not be talking. You know. All, all of these things. The other thing that you, the other thing that you have to make sure of is your patient compliance. Uh, about seventy percent of patients with resistant hypertension are not compliant to their prescribed reduced salt um, diets. Now, if you are not compliant with your salt uh, diet then you are unlikely to benefit from um, some classes of drugs like uh, angiotensin, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. You're unlikely to benefit from uh, angiotensin receptor blocker. You will have reduced benefit from um, uh, diuretics. So these are some factors that you have to, to take into account to. The other problem with the, with the, um, the patient and their non-compliance is they are sometime about 30% of them 
are non-compliant to their prescribed medication. They, they're not taking it for whatever reason. I mean, a lot, a lot of men, for example, do not take it because some medication reduce, reduce their, their potency. Um, some medication makes exercise tolerance um, less. Some medication might um, cause some, some weight gain also. Um, so make sure that the patient is taking your, um, your prescribed medication. That's two factors. Uh, we, we've talked about the medication factor and the patient factor. Now, when you come to the drug factors, um, <clears throat> you have to look at the drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Um, you have to look at other drugs that the patient might be taking and helping this uh, blood pressure remaining high. Like, if the patient is um, taking, for example, um, calcineurin inhibitor, if he's taking um, stimulants, if he's taking, um, um, if a lady is taking contraceptive pills, if they're taking steroids, other medications, it is unlikely that you will, you, uh, you will achieve a good blood pressure while the patient on those medications, because those medications are trying to push the blood pressure up and you're trying to push it down. So it will remain some, somehow high. Um, now, when it comes to the um, last factor, which is the disease factors, make sure that you're not, de you're not dealing with a secondary hypertension, i.e. A, a, a blood, blood pressure that is caused by another disease. Uh, most common uh, is, for example, um, renal artery stenosis, um, some tumors like pheochromocytomas, um, Cushion syndrome, Cohn syndrome. So you've, you've got to make sure that you're dealing with primary hypertension because, because if you're dealing with secondary hypertension, then the treatment shifts to the original cause. And once you, you uh, treat the original cause, you will have your blood pressure um, control. That's, that's the basic message um, I want everybody to take from, um, from this. It appears uh, that uh, from your talk at the rightdoctors.com that the right hypertension management, blood pressure measurement is the key to the first step. Then the right medicine the patient is taking and the right diagnosis of the patient that we are dealing with the second hypertension. Would you like to tell the audience what type of salt or are we should focus because we know that we Asians in a whole, whether we are Indians or Emiratis or Saudis, we tend to take a lot of salt in our diet. Our ancestors were not taking salt at all. You know, in the old times, we would hunt for the salt. So what is the message to the audience that how much salt we should take? How much salt? Well, you can you reduce salt as much as possible. So um, start with not adding salt to, um, to your food. Um, reduce salt um, to your cooked food. If you can avoid it at all, that, um, that would be better. Um, uh, the other thing is um, refrain from um, preserved food. Preserved food has a lot of, um, of salt, um, much more than you can, you can usually taste. So um, reduce the salt added to the cooked food, no added salt on the table, and uh, reduce as much as possible uh, the preserved food. That will hopefully um, put you in the right balance of uh, how much salt you have to, to take in your diet. And uh, with this, we conclude our very interactive talk with Dr. Hassan. And on the behalf of rightdoctors.com, uh, I would uh, like to thank you, Dr. Hassan, for coming to us and giving a very excellent talk how, as a physician and the general public, we should approach if your blood pressure is not controlled by medicines, and this is one of the definitions of resistant hypertension. Thank you very much.